Good morning, everybody. My name is Bilal. I will be talking about monolithic versus uh, layered prosthesis in details. It's going to be uh, this, this lecture is going to include a lot of information. It's going to be very long. It's about six to seven hours, but I will divide it into like maybe 12 videos of half an hour each. I'll try my best to not go uh, beyond 30 to 40 minutes each video so it will be short and you know audible at a certain time uh, let's start with a couple of information this lecture is going to be strictly in english even though i've um, uh, given and lectured in other language uh, so far it's been uh, in two languages i'm thinking of doing it in spanish as well but anyways more than 36 million americans do not have any teeth they're edentulous 120 million people in the U.S. are missing at least one tooth. These numbers are expected to grow in the next two decades. Just, just look at the numbers. 36 million Americans are dentures. Approximately 91% of U.S. adults aged 20 to 64 had dental caries in a permanent teeth. Uh, in permanent teeth in 2011-2012. 91%. All right. 88% of Qatari children, I live in a state of Qatar, uh, in Qatar I live, a country called Qatar right now, so I reside in here and I practice, I have uh, my own lab and I lecture here and stuff like that, so um, I have numbers from Qatar as well, 88% of Qatari children have dental caries, 61% of non-Qatari children who live in Qatar, uh, of 6 years old children have evidence of dental decays. Very surprising numbers, isn't it? Welcome to monolithic versus layered prosthesis optimum result consideration presented by me, Bilal Saleh, MDT. Now, this is a scientific lecture. Uh, it doesn't have any advertising for any product. Uh, that's me. I graduated from Riverside Community College, dental laboratory technician, as a dental laboratory technician, 2005. Graduated from New York University as a Master Dental Technician 2009. I'm a member of American Society of Master Dental Technicians. I have 15 years of experience, even more, in the dental laboratory technician. I worked, managed, owned several dental labs, California, New Jersey, Jordan, and Qatar. I lectured, visited, and had many uh, discussion groups all over the world. This is my official teaser that I put in most of my lectures. Uh, it's just for you to, it's kind of brainstorming, look at it and see what's, what do you recognize, what do you not recognize uh, about uh, this teaser. What would you think that, for example, these teeth are layered, monolithic, how about these? What are they anyway? Crowns, veneers, what kind of technique was used to produce such a prosthesis? Same thing applies to the crowns here, uh, there. Is it monolithic? Is it layered? Uh, how about this overlay? And other materials that, you know, I put to see how much of this material do people really uh, know from the first glance. It's just a teaser. This is uh, some of my cases. Uh, that's on the model and this uh, cemented in the patient mouth. Same question. Do you think it's layered? Do you think it's um, uh, monolithic? How was it made? Is it veneers? Is it crowns, bridges? Uh, all of this I will be answering throughout these videos that we talked about. Uh, this is just a teaser to break the ice and to show you what we will be talking about and to show you that there is much more behind just a shell or a veneer or a crown or a laminate. There is much more behind this work. There is dental materials that you need to know about and then there is techniques of work and then there is different ways of getting to this result and every way has its uh, cons and pros it has its pluses and minuses we will talk about all of that all right same thing applies to this to that whatever now no matter what you talk about i talk about uh, communication and lack of uh, uh, and lack of knowledge in dental laboratory material in, in general these two subjects uh, miscommunication or lack of communication skills and lack of knowledge in dental laboratory materials I like to talk about in the beginning of uh, any of my lectures just to point out the importance 
of uh, not like specifically my lecture but any lecture that talks about uh, materials and talks about uh, uh, techniques so we can elevate the level of dental lab technicians or dental lab practitioners in general so let's look at some numbers and see what kind of what kind of uh, what kind of knowledge do we have about dental lab materials from different point of views in 2015, the Laboratory Management Magazine generated a survey showing 8% of dental lab technicians felt that dentists lacked knowledge of new dental lab materials. Now, let's look at it. That's the, 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 the laboratory's rate top challenges with dentist or client. Their impression taking skills, 47%. Uh, and we're going to talk about how to tackle these uh, tasks, by the way, or tackle these um, uh, numbers. Their demand for lower prices, 18%, communicating with them, 11%, 8% for both the lack of knowledge and meeting their desired deadlines. Now, getting them to pay uh, in a timely manner, 5%, meeting their quality expectations, 3%, which is kind of sad. We should be arguing the quality and how to, uh, uh, you know, raise up the bars, as to speak, uh, much more than we talk about the other skills and the other issues all right but I guess it's an upside down word anyways uh, this is an older survey in 1987 but I still think that you know it applies to much uh, it applies to much of what we talking about uh, as well uh, this is a survey in English all right it pretty much says that communication, 41% says that communication is their biggest um, concern with dentists. 17% tooth preparation, 24% impressions, shade taking, 8%, whatever, whatever. So, in other words, there is lack of communication that people recognize and there is uh, lack of uh, dental lab materials or lack of knowledge about dental lab materials specifically the newer dental lab materials all right i conducted a local survey here in qatar uh, and it showed that practitioners lacked comprehensive knowledge in dental lab materials as well in this market so as a result this uh, course has designed to present ideas techniques and practical tips aimed to help in, uh, increase knowledge therefore reducing errors all right now, do we understand simple communications in the same way? Really, if you want to think on the human level, do we really understand simple communications the same way? Let's look at this video and, uh, and then discuss the issue. President Bush, Condoleezza Rice, uh, Hu Jinato is, is uh, the name of the Chinese, uh, the previous Chinese president, Yasser Arafat, uh, Palestinian president, and Kofi Annan, secretary of the government. Uh, Condoleezza, nice to see you. What's happening? Well, Mr. President, I have the report here about the new leader in China. Great, Condi. Lay it on me. Mr. President, who is the new leader of China? Well, that's what I want to know. Well, that's what I'm telling you, Mr. President. Well, that's what I'm asking you, Condi. Who is the new leader of China? Yes. I mean the feller's name. Hu. The guy in China. Hu. The new leader of China. Hu. The Chinaman. Hu is leading China, Mr. President. What are you asking me for? I'm telling you, Hu is leading China. Well, I'm asking you, Condi, who is leading China? That's the man's name. That's whose name? Yes. Will you or will you not tell me the name of the new leader of China? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Arafat is in China. I thought he was in the Middle East. That's correct, sir. Then who is in China? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is in China? No, sir. Then who is? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, sir. Connie, you're starting to f me off now, and it's not because you're black neither. I need to know the name of the new leader of China, so I want you to get me the Secretary General of the United Nations on the phone. Coffee, Annan? No, thanks. And Condi, call me George. Stop with that Ebonics crap. 
You want coffee? No. You don't want coffee? No, but now you mention it, I could use a glass of milk and then get me the U.N. Yes, sir. Not yes, sir. The guy at the United Nations. Coffee. Milk. Will you please make that call? And call who? Well, who's the guy at the U.N.? No, who is the guy in China? Will you stay out of China? Yes, sir. And stay out of the Middle East. Just get me the guy at the U.N. Coffee. All right, with cream and two sugars. Now get on the phone. Hello, Rice here. Rice, good idea. And get a couple of egg rolls, too, Condi. Maybe we should send some to the guy in China and the Middle East. Can you get Chinese food in the Middle East? I don't know. Well, what do you guys think? I know uh, there is a bit of exa exaggeration in, in uh, this video, but it just tells you that if it kind of you know illustrates that if you're not clear about uh, the terms that you use, the terminology, you know, then much confusing, not much confusion can um, uh, you know can occur. So, uh, in other words, uh, especially in our field, we kind of have to set a terminology between us as dental lab technicians and the dentist or let's say the lab team and the clinic team because sometimes you talk to dental assistants, hygienists, uh, receptionists, uh, whatever so you talk to many uh, team members of this team same thing the doctor could call the lab and you know a technician would answer, the secretary would answer, receptionist so we can you know, sit. Uh, let's say, uh, put a set of, uh, uh, of of terms that when we use, we refer to the same thing. Especially if you're like me, you work in different places: California, New Jersey, Jordan, uh, Qatar, and you travel here and there. You'll find that different uh, terms or different uh, words would mean uh, something else in, in different places, and we will discuss uh, some of that as well. Uh, but pretty much, let's take another example and uh, for this communication or miscommunication. What would you say that this means? If somebody shows you this sign, wouldn't it indicate that everything is fine or okay? Well, would it mean zero, for example, zero? All right. And let me add to it that, you know, it means insult in certain cultures as well. All right. I'll add one more memory from my childhood memories to show you what this means to me pretty much in this area, let's say. So let's say that this is my dad and he's calling my name. Bilal, Bilal, yes, Papa. Eating sugar, no, Papa. Telling lies, no, Papa. And then he shows me this sign. So what does this mean? Well, pretty much in our culture, it means this. If you see this, you run for your life. It's as simple as that, all right? So, you know, it's a simple sign that could be interpreted into many different meanings. Uh, so I, 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 I've been thinking about this uh, and to make things easy, we use this shade, uh, shade guide here in, in, in the region. We use the classical Vita, A1 to D4, and then we use the bleach pretty much. We use, we use the bleach very, very much, bleach shades. 0M1, 0M2, 0M3. So I thought that we should have another tab that's called 0M0. That stands for zero miscommunication obligation. What I mean by this is, is like you obligate yourself to be understood and to be clear and to use terminology, definite terminology that refers to one thing and that it will not create any uh, miscommunication between uh, team members, dental uh, practitioners, whether in the lab or in the clinic. So before grabbing the shade guide and trying to know what shade is for this case or trying to write down on the prescription pad, just keep this keep this in your mind that it's a zero and zero is the most important tab, the invisible tab, but it is the most important tab, the zero miscommunication obligation. All right. Now, what kind of communication do we have? There's an initial communication between dentist and patient, all right? I think they should discuss everything. Shade, shape, final result, treatment plan, delivery uh, time, material choice, and etc. And then comes the planning or team planning between dentists or clinic side 
dental assistants, dental lab technicians, and the, the lab side, the lab technicians, including proper choice of materials. All right. You can use WhatsApp or whatever have you and send all kind of information. Uh, it's free. Uh, the dentist will check uh, this information. Uh, the dentist will, will check this information on their free time. You don't have to have, you don't have to get an answer right away. It's easy. Uh, you can ask anything. You can include photos. You can uh, circle, edit your photos, whatever, and then send, send them. A question that really specific and then they can send you back some specific information uh, as much now agreeing on terminology we established that this is very important and uh, I would illustrate some examples on miscommunications that pretty much happened throughout my experience all right so let's take this scenario uh, let's say that a clinic uh, prescribes wax up for upper centrals and upper laterals with gingivectomy. So, lab understands gingivectomy for laterals only, and that the dentist wants a diagnostic wax up for cosmetic treatment purposes, for veneers, for example, or to illustrate veneers to the patient. Now, clinic means gingivectomy for all upper centrals and laterals will be performed on the patient. The confusion was, where do we do the gingivectomy? That's number one. Number two, the lab thought it's for cosmetic reasons. Therefore, the lab could suggest a surgical guide template if they know that this is for the gingivectomy uh, procedure. It's not for uh, it's not for illustrating uh, cosmetics at this part of the treatment. So I could suggest a surgical guide template for the gingivectomy procedure. The point of the wax up is to be used as a guide for the surgery. How, you know, you, we wax up, we go over the gum and we wax up, uh, up to the line that the dentist drew or illustrate for us. And then we, uh, we can duplicate and take a template like a bleaching tray or, or a soft knife guard or whatever and cut it exactly up to that line uh, where the dentist can place this template in the patient's mouth and uh, conduct their gingivectomy, their laser gingivectomy with it. All right. Let's take another scenario of miscommunication. Six units single zirconia veneered. You know, um, many people take the word veneered for veneers, especially in this region. All right. So veneers milled from zirconium block. This is what we understand. Veneers milled from zirconium block. Now. Can we mill veneers from zirconium block? Uh, can we itch veneers, zirconium veneers? Can is it itchable? Uh, all of this will be discussed in details. Uh, uh, you know, uh, many people uh, did and still think that they're unitchable, and there is nothing that you can do to itch zirconia. And then there's a new studies and new techniques to, to itch, for itching uh, zirconia. We will discuss that in details uh, in its own um, section of this lecture. All right. So anyways, six porcelain veneered crowns over zirconium core. Uh, veneered was used for layered. We thought that veneered means veneers, but veneered was used for layered. You know, veneered, stacked. They're of the same uh, veneer stacked layered. They are of the same uh, meaning. All right, especially in studies, you'll find the word veneered uh, used uh, commonly. Uh, now, this is just to show you how how far miscommunication can go. I asked the dental technician to give me a proof of uh, of itching for the zirconia. So they send me this: the effect of zirconia surface architecturing techniques on the zirconia veneer interfacial bond strength this is talking about the interfacial you know uh, which is uh, the outer layer of the core if it's itched and how ceramics when you veneer ceramics on top of it it will uh, adhere and stick in a better way uh, but uh, as um, you know as the technician saw the word zirconia veneer they thought that this is an evidence of Itching the inside of the veneer zirconia of the zircon of the veneer that's made out of zirconia, so that it will be roughened and uh, get a better mechanical retention and be cemented 
uh, with an interlock and uh, aperture with, and get aperture cementation out of it. But it, it doesn't even talk about that. It talks about the interface, the interfacial uh, um, bond strength between uh, zirconia and the veneered porcelain or the layered porcelain or the stacked porcelain on top of that core material. All right. It doesn't talk about veneers at all. But anyways, scenario three, crown number five, for example, A2 full porcelain. What would you understand if you get this? Right now, the thing is, uh, full zircon. Could it? What, what does full porcelain mean? That's that's why we said we have to be clear on terminology. What does your dentist uh, mean by full porcelain? Is it full zircon, full lithium disilicate pressed, or full lithium disilicate melt? All right. The lab technician would wonder. Now, clinic mint metal free crown of whatever kind we will discuss that later all ceramic crowns whether layered or monolithic to be discussed mostly lab would think monolithic you know full porcelain is full zircon or full lithium disilicate but the clinic meant metal free crown you know because a metal free crown can be monolithic like milled pressed lithium disilicate zircon or it could be layered you know a core layered stacked or veneered with porcelain on top of it so to be discussed, but the, the clinic meant metal free crown, the lab understood monolithic crown. All right. Now our last example would be crown number five, A2 opaque cervical. Uh, you know, many technicians, when they see the word opaque, they take it as a dental lab material, the opaque that we apply on top of the metal. All right. So they would assume that this is the PFM A2. All right. Since we say opaque uh, uh, cervical with a higher corona, towards the cervical so that's what, what a dental technician could think or may think now clinic means emax or zircon or pfm it's unspecified uh, yet but they meant uh, by the opaque they meant that it's a2 wood yellow stain cervical they used opaque as a color as in pigments of color as uh, the chroma of the color so they meant by opaque cervical is to have some, to apply some stains to to the crown cervical pretty much they didn't mean that this is a pfm it's it's unspecified yet it's to be discussed and we shouldn't be assuming that it's a pfm just because we see the word opaque right just like we saw the word veneer and we thought it's the, the word veneer and we thought that it means veneers all right no opaque for stain that's what the clinic meant opaque because the pfm which is the first layer for on top of the metal this is what the lab understood now what does a dental lab technician want really for, for not to fall into miscommunication not to fall into understanding something that's not meant by the clinic SMI just to be articulated that's what a dental technician wants to be happy and put them on tears stuff like that anyway when it comes to clinician to uh, clinician lab communication a technician wants to know three things pretty much type of work is it veneer a crown cantilever maryland bridge implant denture etc dental lab material desired which kind of material do i use a zircon or lithium disilicate pfm whatever okay fabrication technique desired and this is a higher level of communication you can say that you want a lithium disilicate this is the type of material a lithium disilicate veneer all right you want a lithium disilicate veneer this is the first two or you can say i want a pressed lithium disilicate veneer so you've chosen the fabrication technique uh, as well um, i think this should be a, a team decision you know that, you, that the dentist should discuss with the dental lab technician like uh, i don't have enough space i have this and that articulate the case and let's see uh, what kind of uh, prosthesis uh, fits this case better do you think we should make it zirconia a lithium disilicate should it be monolithic should it be layered uh, should it be pfm with a metal island what should we do in such a case and then the dental technician uh, the dental technician's duty i think is to have a good knowledge of dental lab materials and be able to suggest uh, what kind of prosthesis he or she thinks uh, fits this case uh, better.
better and suits this case better uh, based on uh, studies and based on given numbers and we will talk about preparation guidelines we're going to talk about uh, talk about a little bit about cementation we're going to talk uh, much about uh, uh, strength of material flexural strength structural strength and we're going to talk about uh, itching and we're going to talk about uh, uh, mechanical and uh, chemical itching and we're going to talk about many many aspects of dental lab materials in this lecture uh, so uh, stay tuned and we will discuss all of that but my goal here is not to, to specify only the type of work and the type of dental laboratory materials used but to elevate our communication to the fabrication technique desired based on uh, based on real knowledge and real science all right so uh, there's a couple of issues that I want to include with uh, this uh, this first part of the lecture which is price versus quality argument because things are really really changing uh, very much noticeably cheaper price usually means a cheaper combination of employment material because people recycle material you know delivery location service and so on it also means a faster rhythm of production that, promise, that prom, uh, uh, compromises quality through performing shortcuts and un, uh, unapproved techniques. Time versus quality argument, we can say it's almost the same. Allowing enough working time shifts quality towards artistic standards, while not doing so shifts quality towards production line standards. All right, and that's an example of it. This is a single central that's been checked and uh, dealt with on a second model, undissected model. And this is two centrals that you know have been fabricated very quick without even cleaning the model using one model. So contact adjacent contacts, and, you know, occlusion, the way it looks, all kind of stuff, uh, texture of the tooth, uh, artistic layering, whatever. It's totally different when you have time and the crown is really paid for now financial impact of uh, an adequate knowledge there is these days an extra financial burden since it's it, it, the lab the lab now is, is totally different uh, that being said you know pricing of items and services should measure up to the responsibilities number one expected from a modern dental laboratory and the equipment and the investment that the dental laboratory, the laboratory these days uh, puts into the business you know there's an obvious financial impact of the new dental materials and technologies on the modern laboratory products and services pricing let's look at this uh, video about dental labs uh, in America and discuss furthermore. Hair or do nails for a living. Want to adjust eyeglasses or be a bait dealer? You need a license for that too, but you don't need a license to operate a dental lab. Shocking video of a lab in Ohio came to light during a police standoff. Local 12's Paul Latote joins us now live to tell us why you might want to ask your dentist questions about upcoming crowns and bridges and dentures and fillings, Paula. Rob, with an aging population, there is a growing demand for dental products. Dental labs are largely unregulated in over 40 states. Online, it's easy to find labs in China offering cheap crowns and a 10-day turnaround. Domestically, a lab can pop up anywhere. This is a dental lab, the basement of a home in Springfield, Ohio. That's not a dental lab. Actually, there's no law to say it's not, but we'd agree with Darren Blaylock, who owns Greater C, a state-of-the-art lab on the west side. We're scanning the implant site, designing it. He's also working to elevate standards in his industry. He was horrified by the home in Springfield. The man operating in the basement was discovered by our sister station, WSYX, in Columbus, after the operator's brother was arrested at the home on several charges, including using weapons while intoxicated. The dentures being made here have been sold to Ohio dentists. It's self-regulated. There is no minimum standard. That lack of regulation is upsetting to Blaylock, who runs a business that's been in his family three generations. He's been working with the Ohio Dental Association to lobby the legislature for at least minimum industry standards. Some type of inspection um, to inspect the facility. Um, 
to make sure that they're using up-to-date equipment. Blaylock says while in-house labs, basement operations, so-called mom-and-pop places are common, they are normally clean and up-to-date. He does feel at a minimum there should be a certified dental technician there to oversee. Among other things, a CDT needs five years of lab experience. The man operating this lab said he learned his job in a one-year course in prison. He's not being identified because, again, we can't point to a law that's being broken with no lab license needed. But unlike the labs, dentists are heavily regulated by the state dental board, and that's where you as a patient can start asking some questions. What kind of relationship does your dentist have with their lab? And even ask about filling materials. Where do they get them? With filling material, there are some catalog order companies that you know, if you order the product, it'll look like the original thing. It may be outdated. You may not know that. Dentist Dr. Larry Hagen says not all mail order companies are bad, but like labs, he thinks a dentist should take care to deal with reputable companies. He says a good dentist won't mind if you ask if they have personally inspected their dental lab and why they might be ordering materials online, out of state, or even out of the country. Is that a concern? To me it is because, again, we lose control. And I know it's become an issue with not just in dentistry, but a lot of industries where things are over shipped our season. We had the lead issue with the toys a few years ago. There was lead in some crowns years ago. Hagen and Blaylock both say the majority of dentists and labs are above board, but when huge money is at stake, there's always the potential for abuse. And without regulation... I guess it's just a, a moral choice. And the decision to put art in this lab was a choice made to show patients dental work is an art and not just a matter of grinding out teeth. In Ohio, there is no law, there is now rather a law that requires dentists to be told the point of origin of all the materials used in dental products, whether from inside or outside the U.S., but that is not the case in Kentucky. However, in the Commonwealth, a lab does need to have a certified dental technician or equivalent Actual registration of labs is only required in four states. Rob? Paula, thanks very much. After our sister station aired the photos of the Springfield lab, State Representative Heather Bischoff said her office plans to look into whether labs should be regulated and required to have minimum standards of operation. We'll let you know if the law changes. So, uh, as you guys saw, it's pretty sad that low standard lab uh, you know, the price of units from that low standard lab uh, is not to be by any means, it's not to be, uh, you know, uh, compared to uh, a real uh, piece of art that comes from a lab that really invested uh, much money and time and effort uh, into the final product. Uh, and the guy learned his. Uh, he learned to be a dental technician in jail, so what, what, what does that tell you? Is that dental technicians probably are criminals by nature or something? I'm just kidding, of course. I'm just saying <laughs> that, you know, we have to raise up the bars in, on everything. On education for dental lab technicians, certifications for dental lab technicians, responsibilities, uh, whether scientific or uh, experience-wise for dental lab technicians. And on the other hand, raise up the bars on uh, all kind of regulations for a dental lab. Uh, and I, I will discuss in, in different uh, set of lectures, what, what is a dental lab? What kind of business is, is a dental lab? Is it, it, does it have to have uh, here in Qatar and in Jordan, we have to have a medical license. Uh, you apply for it, there's a set of rules and exams and all kind of stuff. Uh, you have to submit experience, you have to submit certificate, your certificate at least uh, two and above years of uh, community college uh, associate uh, degree of dental laboratory technician for you to have this license and, and you have to have a license to open your own lab and you know a set of rules that really does not exist in America surprisingly and we will discuss that in details but in a different set of lectures hopefully so just to include uh, uh, this part of the lecture we talked about lack of communication lack of no lack of knowledge and lack of communication we talked about both of these and we talked about financial impact as well as at, uh, allowing time 
for, for good work uh, result, uh, financial impact and time impact uh, on the work. Uh, that was the first part of this lecture. Uh, in the second part, we will start talking about uh, monolithic restorations, which is the core uh, of uh, this lecture. Thank you for listening. I'll be with you in the second part. Thanks.